Lumberyard 1.10. Let's get to work. What's going on, people? Mr. Toolbox back with another Amazon Lumberyard video. After a months long vision quest into the bowels of Hadoop and Erlang development, I am back with a vengeance. A little bit rusty, I won't lie, so I'm going to start off easy with a video about installing Lumberyard 1.10. Yeah, that's going to sound like a remedial topic for some, but I do think it bears covering because there are now two ways to install the Lumberyard editor. Uh, we'll check out the first, the kind of traditional download from the web, run the installer, yada yada. And then we'll cover the second, which is now you can clone it directly from Git. And it brings along with it a couple cool new possibilities that I want to touch on. As has been and forever will be tradition with these point release videos, I'll drop a link in the description below to the release notes for 110. There are some pretty cool improvements. Uh, namely, I'll give you my highlights, you can check out the release notes, find your own. Uh, improvements to Cloud Canvas and the Cloud Canvas Gems. Uh, a lot of UX improvements, uh, the Entity Outliner and Entity Inspector got a pretty big bump. As did uh, the docking system, it's now out of preview, so what you saw in 1.9 and 1.91 is now uh, kind of baked in. And I like it a lot, it makes just kind of using the editor a nicer experience. Uh, Real-time logging for the asset processor, it's a big help. You don't have to spelunk log files um, if you got the asset processor open for a lot of that sort of stuff. And then there's a new color scheme in the debug log console. I know it's not really big for most people, but it's something I uh, quite appreciate because I do a lot of stuff uh, kind of haphazardly. I break a lot of things, so being able to see that in real time is, is nice. So let's get going and download this thing. I'll throw a link to the download URL in the description down below here. If you download this through the traditional route or via Git, you owe it to yourself to stop by this page. You want to scroll down a little bit to the additional download section. Grab a copy of the starter game with action update. There is so much there that you can learn from that I don't think the install is complete without it. Yes, it's big. It's three gigs, but do download it. It's super awesome. I'll show it off a bit in a while. But before we get there, scroll back up. We've got the download now button under Lumberyard Beta 1.10. Give that guy a click. It'll end up in your downloads folder, wherever that might be. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the installer. As always, Lumberyard wants to install on your local C disk. That's not something I want. And I'm just compelled to click options when I see it on a window. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm going to switch this to D. I believe I put them in program files, so I'm going to quickly find that. Yeah, there it is. Sticker there. And then we're good to go. Click OK. And then install. I've got a UAC prompt up. You can't see it. I'm going to click yes. And this is going to whiz through. I'll meet you back on the other side. Installation's wrapped up. It's asking me to start the setup assistant. One thing I wanted to point out, you may have seen I pointed the installer at Program Files Lumberyard. It's smart enough to create a directory with the version number in it. So kind of point it at the root where you want the version folder to be. You don't have to go ahead and create that yourself, otherwise you'll end up nesting it one level too deep. Uh, but that's all kosher. Everything looks good here. So I'm going to start the setup assistant. So I launched Setup Assistant and I can't find it. Now, I recently changed my primary monitor out to an ultra wide. Uh, so things are kind of where they remember themselves being back in my old monitor. It gets a little problematic. If you're ever in this situation, what you can do is find the icon in the taskbar that you're worried about. In my case, it's the Setup Assistant here. Give it a click. And then if you hold Alt and press Space, you'll see you get this little menu here. What you can do is click move and then use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Kind of slide it back out into view. So if the window key and arrow keys don't get something back into your field of view, try that little trick to get it moved out. And then once it's moved, you can move it with your mouse to kind of settle it where you want. 
I run into that a lot because I switch resolutions more than is prudent, but it's pretty helpful. As you can see in 1.10, we've got a pretty welcome screen here. We're going to go ahead and do a custom install. If you're just starting with Lumberyard for your first time, go ahead and do the Express install. It'll get you running and you won't have to go through some of this customization stuff. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and customize it's what I'm used to from earlier releases. Pretty much all of this will be just as we all remember it have, if you've done this before. I'm going to want to tick a couple boxes to make sure I can compile the game, the engine, the editor. I'll leave Android and dedicated Linux boxes off for the meantime. Move this up a bit so we can see it better. That looks good. We'll move on. I'm going to have a bunch of stuff to install. Uh, I'll leave Speed Tree for now. It's really awesome. I should cut a video on it, but for now we'll leave it and come back to it later. Click Next. And we're going to see a bunch of SDKs we need to get in place. Now, for the uninitiated, this step will take a while. It says it's going to download the Mark of the Beast's worth of gigabytes. That's 6.66 gigs. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click Install All. We'll let that go, and I'll meet you back when it's all done. See down at the bottom here, we have the download progress. So you can know kind of where you're at. Keep an eye on that, and when it's done, I will be back. All right, that didn't take too long. All systems are go. All green check marks. So let's move on to the next step, which is going to be optional SDKs. Now these, as the name would tell you, aren't necessary. I'm going to go ahead and install a couple that pertain to my system. Things like Maya, 3ds Max, Photoshop even. If you don't have any of this stuff, go ahead and leave them off. I would recommend either FFmpeg or LibAV. You'll need one of those to play video. Uh, so choose whichever you like best. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and whip through this and when it's finished I'll be back. I kind of cheated. I just opened up my Lumberyard 1.90 install, went into the third party directory, found the optional SDKs I was after. In my case, it was FFmpeg and then the Max and Maya folders. Now you can just select them and then just drag them into your third party folder for 110. Once you do that, you can come up here to the top right corner, click that verify box. You'll see now I've got check marks where I need them. I'm ready to move on. Here at the end, we'll be prompted to install any plugins that we can for software we've got on the machine. I've got a UAC prompt open, so I'm going to click yes. These are really quick installs. So now you'll see I got all checks up here. I don't have this software, so we're all good to move on. Click next. And you can see some things that you missed or that you don't have installed. It's usually okay unless you've got some red X's over here to just go ahead and move on. So I'm going to click close. Before I launch the editor or the project configurator, I want to install the starter game with action update. So I'm back here in my downloads. I'm going to right click that guy and extract it. Now that was pretty large, so it's going to take a couple seconds. I'll be back when it's done. Once that's done extracting, you can pop open the folder. You'll see a dev in there. I'm going to copy that. And then in my 110 directory, you'll see I've got a dev there as well. So here in the root, I'm going to go ahead and paste it. And it's going to write all of those gigabytes straight over. It's worth mentioning that you're not going to overwrite the dev folder you have here in 110. Windows will do a clean job merging that, so you can just drag it over or copy paste. And what was in your dev folder over here in your 110 install will still be there when you're done. So we're installed. Next thing to do is open the project configurator. Hey, that opened up on my screen. How cool. Of course, I'm going to choose the starter game, so I'll click that, set as default and then close the project configurator. And now we can open up the editor itself. So give that a click. First time through it always takes a little bit of time. You may get a UAC type prompt or a firewall prompt here. So 
I will allow access. As much as I'd love to share my AWS credentials with everyone, I'm going to cut this, so I'll meet you back with the editor open. And there she blows. Let's go ahead and open a level. Expand levels. We'll give a click on the starter game, open that up. Now you know it's working hard when you get the not responding title on your window. Uh, it did load up. As you can see, I'm getting about 25, 23 frames per second. This is on a beefy machine with a 1080 Ti, so don't expect too much out of yours with it. But just look at this. Oh my god, the sample level. You're killing me. There we go. It's just so well put together. I don't want to screw around with the starter game too much here. That's not the focus of the video, but if you do open the Getting Started Guide folder in the Levels selection, you see there's a bunch of really cool demos around orientation, terrain, component slices. The list goes on. I definitely recommend taking a look at them. Uh, one of the questions I get most often is, how do I make a full game? Or how do I put all this stuff together? And I think the starter game does a really good job of showing you that in the complete package and then also giving you these getting started guide levels that kind of show you the individual components. So it's a really, really cool thing to check out. I'd highly recommend downloading it. Um, just giving it a look on your own time. I may cut another video where I take a look at these more in depth so that we can see what's going on in them. But I, like I said, just download it while you're getting the editor. There's no reason not to. So let's hit the rewind button. Pretend I didn't just go through that install. I want to talk about the Git option. I think it's pretty exciting for a couple of reasons here. So first, each release of Lumberyard is going to be set as a branch with release tags on it in the official GitHub repo, which means you can clone whichever branch, whichever version you want. It makes version targeting a bit easier on us. You can also fork the repo in its entirety. When you do that, you can pull it into your own repository, make whatever changes you want, and be able to collaborate with other people using that as the origin. So any changes you make to the editor or to a project in there, you can share with others easier than zipping up a bunch of your stuff in dev and then shooting it over, having them make changes, and then having to merge that yourself. It makes collaboration without something like Perforce in the mix a lot easier to deal with. And then last but not least, you can now submit pull requests from Git, which kind of removes that 50 line limitation we had on the forums. So if you have an improvement in mind, make it, make sure it works, submit a pull request, Given that this is kind of release scheduled, what you'll see is that if you do get a pull request approved, it won't be merged into the version you're working on, but they'll get in touch with you. They'll slate it for an upcoming release. And we've got no doubt the team will be really receptive of high quality pull chain or pull requests. I'd recommend going that route. Most people doing any serious development won't be strangers to Git, but you might be a stranger to Git on Windows. It's not super intuitive. I'll throw a link to the Windows Git client down in the description below. Here it is. Every time you visit the site, it starts the download immediately. It is the most obnoxious thing in the world. Um, but I'll throw this in the description. You're going to need a copy of Git installed on your Windows box to clone the repository. While I'm at polluting the description with links, I'll throw one to the official announcement of Lumberyard on GitHub and a link to the actual repository down below as well. Uh, the first one is a good read. The second one you will need to clone or fork or do both the repository. So those will be down in the description. So let's move on and get ours going. Here in the Lumberyard repository, you'll see the readme markdown file. It's really well documented and what it recommends doing is forking the repo and then cloning and then downloading some additive files i've already forked if you haven't what you want to do is scroll up to the top of the window see the fork button right here go ahead and give it a click it'll create a repository inside your user account i'm going to flip over to that now 
All right, here we are in my copy. You can see it's no longer AWS Lumberyard. It's Mr. Toolbox Lumberyard. Next thing we need to do is clone it. So over here on the right-hand side, you'll see Cloner Download. Click that. You will get a URL to clone. I'm not going to use SSH. I'm going to use HTTPS. So I'll go ahead and copy that to the clipboard. And then I need to launch Git. So you'll see git bash if you type git into the Windows search. That's what we need. For this, I'm going to put it right next door to my actual install. So I'll move into my D drive and then program files, lumberyard. I'm going to make a directory called git in here. Perfect. So I'll move into git. And then we will git clone and paste that URL in. And we're cloning. It's going to take a little bit of time, so I'll be back in a moment. The clone is done, so let's pop open a command prompt. Move over to D into our lumberyard git directory into lumberyard and that should be the root of the repository it is so the next step is to run git bootstrap.exe you see you're prompted to download essential content not included in the git repository so i'm going to go ahead and press enter This, as many things, will take a while to complete, so I'll see you in a few. Once the bootstrap is finished, it'll launch Setup Assistant, just like we saw earlier, but let's take a quick look at what we did. We run Git Bootstrap, it downloads about 4 gigabytes from CloudFront. It then extracts that into a temporary directory, and then moves the contents over to where they will be. So that's all it does, and then it launches Setup Assistant. And we end up in the same place we were. So I can click Customize. You'll see that this is in a different location than the install that we did earlier. Asks me the same sort of questions. I can answer in the same ways. I'll have to download some more SDKs or I could just copy them over if I was feeling lazy. Uh, but the nice thing about cloning from Git, I think it'll really come into its own when 111 and subsequent updates come out. Um, when we can update more easily um, and then also just the collaboration front being able to fork the official project make your changes share that with others i think they're both really big wins for the way we should be working it'll make getting up and running a little less painful and it'll certainly get upgrading to be a lot less painful i'm super stoked about this i'm actually going to run on the git version so that when 111 is out i can show you how to do an update so there you have it, installing Lumberyard 1.10 two ways. I'd recommend the Git way. You do whichever you like better. So we've got the rust shaken off. In the next video, we'll start tackling some more technical stuff. I've got some plans to do some Twitch streams, things like that, while I'm working through the engine. Um, as I say at the end of every one of these videos, please do join the Slack channel. I will drop a link in the description below. We've got the analytics up for it right here. We've got 12,405 messages sent since we started. I think that's pretty incredible. People have been really helpful. Everybody's shared quite a bit. I think there's some pretty infectious uh, enthusiasm there. Questions do not go unanswered. So if you've got anything you want to ask, you want to talk about with Lumberyard, it's the place to be. Please do jump in. We've got a lot of helpful and cool conversation going on there. On the topic of Slack, there is a learning channel in there where a lot of people have been posting tutorials in my absence, and now that I'm back, I'm sure that'll continue. But it's been great to see other people step up and start producing really good content. So if you are hungry to learn anything about Lumberyard, the learning channel and that Slack in general are really great places to be. That's it. Uh, questions, comments, unbridled hatred, I'll go down below. Feel free to drop me a comment. If there's anything you want to see in the near future, please do let me know. I'm open to input. Otherwise, I will see you later.